welcome to episode 8 of Wikimove, our podcast where we discuss the future of the Wikimedia movement. I'm Nicole Ebbe and with me is Niki Zeuner. We are both working in Wikimedia Deutschland's movement strategy and global relations team. This episode was recorded on January 20th at 1400 UTC. Things may have changed since we recorded this show, but what we still know. By 2030, Wikimedia will become the essential infrastructure of the ecosystem of free knowledge, and anyone who shares our vision will be able to join us. Our home base is not only the audio cast, but we also have a meta page and a web page. And all the relevant links uh, that you hear about in this episode are going to be available in the show notes. Talking of home base, uh, we're not really talking from home. So only Nicole is at home, but I'm from the on the road, so that's why our sound is a little bit different today. What's going on in today's show, Nicole? Today's show is a special show about movement strategy. Surprise! So we invited three distinguished guests from Africa to talk about our strategy 2030 and how to make it relatable and understandable for newcomers in our movement. So um, we did an evaluation survey, just to introduce this interview, um, a while ago, and Ruby, who is on our show today, suggested that we better communicate movement strategy to newcomers. So um, we think Wikimove can be a tool not just to communicate about movement strategy with those people who are involved in it, but also with those people who are new to it. And um, become a tool to better understand what it is. Ruby, can you elaborate a little bit on your thoughts there? Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to be on this podcast. I'm so excited. Um, I believe that movement strategy is really an important part of our movement, and we all have a very big role to play in it because these conversations started way back, like 2017, and I got to um, joined the movement somewhere in 2019, and I've had opportunity to be in some of the conversations, both locally and globally. And I've had, um, I mean, like initially when I joined these conversations, I was doing a lot of listening than <laughs> contributing, so I had the confidence to begin to contribute to it. So, but one thing I, I we noticed, and especially I will speak for the African community, is that a lot of newcomers and sometimes even people who have been around for a while continue to be left out for of this um, significant knowledge and conversation around the movement strategy. Because um, I would say that basically, um, organizers we are very busy recruiting people, hundreds of people. We are thinking about running our events. We're trying to meet our metrics. We're trying to meet our reporting timelines. And we seem to have little time to sort of like communicate this to the newcomers that we are recruiting every day in our movement, in our communities. And so you find out that there are newcomer organizers who even don't know anything about the movement strategy. And they're doing amazing work in the community. So I'd say the knowledge is power and knowledge of our movement strategies is, is significant as helping us achieve the goals that we have set for ourselves by 2030. And I say this because once we are aware, once the newcomers also get to know about the movement strategy, you will see that it's going to reflect in our programs, it's going to reflect in our events, the tools that we're building in a community. And so we see that this is really a significant um, role that communities, organizers, user group affiliates need to consciously play in um, communicating this to their community members. And it's up to us to identify ways that we can socialize it in a way that appeals to our community. Like we're doing here, talking, talking about movement strategy on We Can Move, which is an exciting opportunity to bring people along in this conversation and for instance, we, are, I'm, we at OFWA, we are organizing a three-day trainer trainers workshop. And as part of our three, three days um, training, we have incorporated an aspect, um, like a time where we're going to train um, these organizers about the movement strategy. Because we see it as a very significant thing, because these are people who are training other volunteers in other part of Ghana you know, different regions of Ghana. And so we need to bring them along in this conversation. And believe it or not, newcomers are the future of the movement. And there are volunteers who started the movement strategy conversation. Trust me, some of these um, uh, volunteers are no longer with us. And this is a reality that we're going to be seeing. So 
he'd been using me for instance like i just joined like 2019 um in in this conversation so there are people who are going to be joining from time to time and we need to find a way to bring them along and um before i had my plenty talking so i i did a very interesting um survey that was somewhere in the same but trying to understand uh, how newcomers um trying to assess newcomers knowledge about the movement strategy uh especially and also ask them questions uh Ask them if they had questions about the movement strategy, and, and I was uh, very amazed to get interested feedback. And for um, some, they were they were asking like, "When is it going to take place, and who is going to implement it?" And so it tells you that we have a lot of work to do in bringing along these newcomers. If we continue to leave these newcomers out of this knowledge, out of this conversation, we are only going to have a future of leaders who will not be guided, who has no knowledge about the movement strategy and we might might not get to where we want to get to. So I know this can be a really difficult task, but I, I am a community leader and I know sometimes it's difficult to get volunteers' attention to these things. And it's not enough to just tell volunteers, go to the meta page to, to read all this bulky message. That will not happen. So it's about how we bring them into this conversation in a more interesting and engaging way so that we can bring them along with us. That's the little that I'll say. Thank you so much, Ruby. And I hand over to Nicole to introduce the guests that we invited, uh, sort of given this prompt by Ruby. Thank you, Ruby. And thank you, Nikki. It's my pleasure now to introduce our guests. And I'll start with Ruby, Ruby Demonshi Brown. She joined the movement in 2019 and volunteered in different roles. She also contributed to uh, the global campaign for Wiki for Human Rights in 2022 as a fellow at the Wikimedia Foundation. And she's now working at the Open Foundation West Africa as a senior program officer. And then we have two guests here that um, really brought a lot of questions to these to this conversation. And I look very much forward to talking to Sharon Dedi Tago. She studies at the Ghanaian University and joined the movement in 2022 as a volunteer also at the Open Foundation West Africa. And then we have Nikambo Isaac Kangu. He is a South Sudanese refugee living in Uganda currently, and he joined the movement in August of 2022, so he's very new, and he's currently a diaspora coordinator for the Wikimedia community user group South Sudan in the refugee settlements in Uganda, so he's bringing a very specific perspective to our conversation today. So uh, we prepared some questions, and I think the first one, um, the first block of questions um, that you guys wanted to ask us are around generally what the movement strategy is. Um, Likambo, you want to you wanna open up with the first question? I have some questions. My first question is, what is the 2030 Wikimedia movement strategy about and why is it in place? That's an excellent question that gets us right into the topic. So it is about the people of the movement, of the Wikimedia movement all across the planet working on freeing up knowledge and it's about how they work together it's about how they connect about how they build each other's capacity and about how they make decisions so decision making what we in movement jargon we call that governance so at what point you know is it is it in uganda is it uh, at the level of the user group that you're you're making decisions? Is are the decisions happening maybe at a regional hub, or are the decisions happening at the Wikimedia Foundation? Um, so those are some of the things that the movement strategy tries to change um, from where we are now to where we want to be in 2030 to have a movement that is inclusive of everybody that is easy to join, it is fun to join, and um, that provides the infrastructure, um, sort of the backbone for creating uh, free and open knowledge. So I think, uh, Likambo, Isaac, you had another question after that. What does movement stand for? Yeah, I'm going to take that question because it's one of my favorite <laughs> 
things to talk about as well. So the term movement, we use it very, very often in in all our conversations and, and discussions. And for me, movement really stands for basically every human and every organization, and you could potentially also say every machine that contributes to the Wikimedia project and our mission. So all the volunteer community members, but also, of course, the affiliates and the Wikimedia Foundation who contribute to, to this movement. Third question is, why is it 2030 but not 2025 or 2050? Yeah, thank you. In 2016, the Wikipedia turned 15 years old. And that was a moment where we as a movement basically thought, okay, these 15 years were like revolutionary and exciting and um, uniting us. But what about the next 15 years? What are we going to achieve and build together in the next 15 years? And I think just to come up with a rounder or nicer number it wasn't then 2031 or something like that but 2030 because i think also at that time many other like organizations or groups were working towards some some future goal and 2030 is like it was far away at the on the horizon but still close enough to make some plans for it that would be my explanation um for this how did the movement strategy come about and what inspired it? Yeah, that is also a very good question. I think we could even talk about this uh, for, I don't know, hours. But I'm trying to be brief because I know that there are many other exciting questions coming up. So first of all, as I said, in 2016, when Wikipedia turned 15, there was this big question uh, on the table, like, what's next? What about the next 15 years and so on? And how are we going to re remain relevant in the world? And what are we going to build probably also that's beyond the encyclopedia? And there were, I would like to uh, mention two things. And one is the the Chapters Dialogue project that Wikimedia Deutschland initiated in 2013 already, where we in actually interviewed all the affiliates and the Wikimedia Foundation about their roles and responsibilities and about their needs and challenges in the movement. What basically came out of this was that many affiliates weren't happy with their roles and also the re relationship with the Wikimedia Foundation and that they felt that we had basically grown out of our own governance structures, that we were standing in our own way in terms of growing uh, growing the movement and also diversifying resources. So there was some kind of frustration with the current situations. And then also we realized that we are like super far away from our own vision, which says every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. So every single human being and all knowledge, that's something that we actually need to get better at and that we where we really need to change our own functioning and our own ways of doing things to actually come closer to that vision. And now I think the next question is coming from Sharon. Hey, Sharon. What would the future look like come 2030? The future come 2030, if it's up to the movement strategy as, you know, the movement strategy is not a person, but it's a bunch of language that can be found all over uh, Meta. And the core of the movement strategy uh, is what we call the strategic direction. And the strategic direction says that by 2030, um, we will be the infrastructure of the ecosystem of free knowledge and anyone can join us. And so the future, in my view, looks like that the Wikimedia movement is a movement that is very attractive for people to join, that is fun to join, that is um, it's easy to join. So you, can, you know, most people in the world will know that Wikipedia and the other knowledge projects are projects you can contribute to. You can not just consume them, but you can also contribute to them. And it's easy to do that. There, we have removed the technical barriers. We have removed some of the social barriers. Maybe we're going to talk about it later. And so whether you're a diaspora refugee um, in a different country or whether you're somebody sitting in a tower in a city, wherever you are in the world, there's a language version or ways to, to understand other language versions and translate them and bring them to you. So uh, that's kind of the my interpretation of the strategic direction is that we're an open movement 
anybody can join us and we're continuously um, improving sort of the social and the technical infrastructure. As a volunteer, what is my contribution to the strategy and what do I stand to benefit from the strategy? So it's a really good question. And when I answer that question, I always go back to that part of the movement strategy that's called the strategic direction because that is sort of the visionary part of the movement strategy. And the way I see it is that in 2030 or by 2030, strategic direction says we are the infrastructure of the ecosystem of free knowledge and everyone who wants to can join us. So the vision I have in 2030 is that we are an, an open movement that is very easy to join that um, it's fun to join, whether you're a refugee in a camp somewhere in the diaspora outside of your country, or you're some urban person sitting in a high tower in a city. It doesn't matter. You can join and you can work together across the world. And we have removed the technical and the social barriers that make it hard for people to join and to share their knowledge. So that's my vision. Uh, everyone has a little bit of a different vision. But I think the best description of that is the strategic direction, which we'll link in the show notes. Thanks, Sharon. Did you have another question? Um, what are the goals of the movement and why do we need the movement? That's an excellent question. So the goals, biggest like goal for a movement is, I think, the vision. Like every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. That's what's driving us and that's what's uniting us. And then if we look closer at movement strategy, the two goals are basically knowledge as a service and knowledge equity. Then you ask, why do we need a movement? I think this vision and those goals are yeah, like mega huge and bold and no single community or uh, affiliate can reach it alone. We can only achieve this if, if we work together and united as a movement. And this also goes or especially goes for countries where there is, for example, political instability or even government oppression against free knowledge and there's no freedom of speech. For example, then belonging to a huge movement, to a huge worldwide movement actually can support individuals who are actually at risk of persecution. Thank you so much. I have one more question, which I want to know about, because people often ask us who can contribute to the movement strategy. Yeah, thank you. So my first, my initial response to this would, of course, be everyone. But that, so everyone, basically community members, affiliates, the Wikimedia Foundation, so everyone who's interested. But I think that saying that alone doesn't do the trick. It's the same as that we say uh, the uh, Wikipedia is the encyclopedia everyone can edit. Yeah, theoretically, yes, but there are so many barriers. That also goes for movement strategy. It needs to become more accessible and easy for people to understand and contribute to. Also, there need to be better coordination and connection between the different actors who are now implementing in, who are implementing movement strategy in their own communities and organizations so that they, again, can benefit from yeah, learning from each other, from, from each other experiences and also from their challenges along the way. Is there anything else you'd like to ask? How to convince people to come on board? So like, how do you convince, how do I, all of us, convince people to come on board? I'm going to try and answer that question. Also, very good question and not such an easy answer. I wish it would be that easy that we just say, hey, come and join us. But I think, first of all, we need to use movement resources to create welcoming environment where you can provide like onboarding, internet and refreshments, for example, for people to take part. And then also take, part, uh, take advantage of the train the trainer opportunities and resources that are provided by fellow Wikimedians across the globe. And then also you can always apply for Wikimedia Foundation rapid grants and movement strategy grants to support such activities. This is probably a short answer and not giving all the answers, but at least a, a first step in that direction. My question goes, how does the movement strategy deal with the regional disparities in Practical approach. The movement strategy itself, you know, doesn't really deal with anything. Um, it's 
it's sort of people uh, doing it. And um, but it addresses so the the language in the movement strategy definitely addresses um, and, and and acknowledges and recognizes that we have huge disparities um, amongst communities um, in the movement. And um, one of the ways uh, the recommendations try to address that, you know, these are economic disparities, disparities um, in terms of, like you say, in terms of internet access. Um, and um, so one of the ways in the recommendations we try to address is by saying, we need if we want to grow the Wikimedia movement in these regions that are experiencing disparities that are underrepresented right now, or that even have been marginalized in the past, then we need to direct more resources into these regions, and that means money, that means technical assistance, that means going in and better understanding what are the barriers and how can we how can we um, address them, and. Um, uh, you know, building software that that is better equipped at dealing um, with the situations in those areas. So um, there is definitely a strong sort of call in the recommendations to doing that, that instead of investing the money in the global north, going to the global south and strategically investing there in people and in, in technology so that these um, these communities that you're talking about that experience disparities have a better shot at getting part of the movement. So that would be my answer. It's not super satisfying because it's not like immediate, but I think with the language and the movement strategy for the first time, we actually acknowledge that that's going on and that it needs to be addressed. This one majorly apply to newcomers and editors from Sub-Saharan Africa. How will the movement strategy address the issue of article approval or verification as some of the admins do not have information about the local context? Even if they don't know much about the con content, they are still the ones approving the articles. Yes, thank you for bringing that super important issue up. Um, so movement strategy does not directly address this issue in, in the recommendations. Um, but I, I think since then we have realized that this is a central problem that um, more and more people are aware of and that prevents um, content from emerging communities being shared in the, in the larger Wikipedia versions. Um, it's a little bit of a problem that because, uh, you know, as, as, a, as somebody speaking, as spe speaking as somebody working for an affiliate and, um, Ruby can probably say the same as working for the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, it is a little bit outside of the sphere of affiliates because as affiliates, we do not interfere with community governance. We do not, um, you know, we, had, we were unable nor are we willing to change who are the administrators. Um, the, the communities have their own system of governing the projects. So, um, I guess my very unsatisfying answer is that affiliates should think about how they can facilitate dialogue about this problem, how they can increase awareness and how they can be allies to um, those people who are currently not or are experiencing, you know, these problems with notability criteria that are, have been shaped in, in the global north and by established administrative traders. Um, I would encourage you to stay loud and noisy and angry about this issue. And, um, you know, I can only say as affiliates or as my affiliate, you know, we, we stand by your side, but it's, it's going to be, a, it's going to take a while, um, to, to make that kind of cultural change. So that would be my, again, unsatisfying answer. But again, you know, if, if we say in the recommendations and in the strategic direction that we want to be open to and that anybody can join and share their knowledge, then and this this turns out to be the biggest notability turns out to be one of the big barriers and we definitely need to address it together. Thanks, Isaac, for bringing that up. 
Well, you can also respond to my, uh, you know, with your thoughts to, to my, my thoughts. Yes. Thank you so much for your answers. As you said, we need to really have a lot of dialogue as making a lot of alarms about the issues affecting us. My question is, how can the movement strategy, how can the movement support activities in remote areas without internet connection? For example, in the refugee settlement and other places. Yeah, thank you for that question. I actually think that this is one of the million dollar questions or something like that, because it's so very difficult um, to answer. And I wish again that we would have like super good answers to all of them. One answer that uh, I can say is that maybe Kiwix is a good op uh, option because that's this um, Wikipedia offline reading and editing that could actually help support activities in remote areas. And in addition to that, I think um, also here, like working together, either working together with like some refugee support organizations or also with people who are already doing some kind of support, that that could be an option. But also maybe I think you might also add a little bit of context to Kiwix here. Yeah, so um, just to add a little bit of the Kiwix offline. So we have uh, been um, also doing that because we identified um, that there are some people that are left out because of internet connectivity issues. And so we came up with what we call the Kiwix for Schools project because a lot of schools in Ghana, especially in remote areas, do not have internet or access educational resources. So this is just really one of the ways that we have been um, also getting um the uh, helping students to access this education, um, educational contents from Wikipedia and other open educational resources in school. And uh, and as part of this project that we've been doing, actually we've been doing it in Ghana for the past two years. And this time we're going um, more um, extend. We're, we're extending the impact to other countries in Africa because uh, during the weekend Daba conference. A lot of community members expressed their interest to learn about how they can also implement similar projects in their community. Because, I mean, like, this is Africa. This is the reality. And we cannot wait for Internet to get everywhere. And that means we're going to wait for a long time. So this is one of the ways that we are providing solutions. So be on the lookout for the Africa um, KWX for School Mentorship um, Program, which uh, aims at mentoring other um, Africa communities who are interested, I mean, volunteers who are interested to implement similar projects in their region. So this is one of the ways, uh, I mean, like um, Nikki, Nicole has said it right, like um, that we can use and, and we can explore more open tools and resources and see how we can get this knowledge to them. And as part of our KBS project, we also try to introduce um, basic knowledge about Wikipedia, the ecosystem just so that like just to get them thinking about it before they get out of school and it's really helpful in trying to lay their foundation because not many people even know about the fact that they could edit wikipedia i got to know that i could actually edit wikipedia in 2019 so you can imagine and there's a whole lot of people who don't even know that they could even contribute there's even a community behind it there's, like we just didn't know i got to know everything in 2019 so you can imagine there's still a lot of work to be done in Africa. Yeah, thank you, Ruby, for actually helping me out here and for providing all that context. That's super interesting also to hear. When we talk about newcomers again, what else would be on your mind? What What is it that you would like to know, Sharon? Um, I would like to know how we can design the movement so it's easy to join for newcomers? I mean, an easy answer to this would be it's in the strategic direction because there we say we will break down the social, political and technical barriers that are preventing people from accessing and contributing to free knowledge. And that's, again, a huge and bold sentence, but what does it actually mean? So, for example, to, to reduce technical barriers, um, get better at enabling people to edit on their phones, actually, and improve the user experience overall on, on people's phones, but also, of course, on the desktop. And then social barriers that keep people from contributing 
to our project so that we create an atmosphere where people can actually feel safe, where we don't allow harassment and yeah, where, where we provide for safety and inclusion, not only online on our project, but also um, offline, like when we meet at events or that, uh, smaller gatherings and meetings that we really increase this awareness and attention to harassment. It's actually a thing. And it keeps people from joining our movement. And we really need to do something, or not only something, but many things to prevent that. And then one large barrier for newcomers is, of course, also the language barrier. Our movement is very much centered around the English language. Um, how can we yeah, be more inclusive and um provide for translations and interpretation, of course, but also what we tend to do, and I'm pointing at my finger at myself too, to, for, to avoid jargon. So not, yeah, not to use all those crazy like wiki, wiki internal <laughs> language and slang, but really try to use language that is more accessible to more people. Maybe this list is also um, even longer, but I think these are actually really the the major things that we can improve so that we create better um, conditions for new people to join. I think maybe you know that one of my um, favorite topics in our movement is governance. And some people don't believe it, but yes, I love talking about governance. And... Um, what would be on your mind or what would you like to know about global governance? How can they plan to support? Yeah, thank you for that question around hubs. And I mean, one one thing is, of course, always money. So there are grants available, movement strategy implementation grants. But there are, of course, also different initiatives that offer support in like technical and governance questions like from the from the Wikimedia Foundation. And I think it's not only about this like grant support and advice, but it's also very much about the exchange between the different hub initiatives. I don't even know how many hubs are currently in the process of being piloted, but maybe 10 or even more. And there are so many people behind those hubs that um, there's a lot of value in their knowledge and in their experience. So we don't have to repeat mistakes over and over again and really learn from each other and build upon build upon each, each initiative's experiences. So I think that's really what this support is about. How can I or anybody access information about financial support in the movement? So I, I'll take that one. Um, and... I want to talk about two things. One is the way things are now. And then one is the way things might be in the future. So the way things are now is that all the financial resources are um, being gathered at the Wikimedia Foundation, or not all of them, but the biggest amount. And the Wikimedia Foundation has grants programs by which they then redistribute some of that money. Um, to projects, people, and communities that apply for it. So there is um, pages on Meta. If you type into Meta uh, grants, then you'll get to the grants portal and you can see the different types of grants that are available for different types of projects. And um, some of them are, you know, they're small and that's rapid grants and they're very easy to apply for and you can get pretty quickly you can get money as a user group to to run some activities. Um, so, for example, if you want to do newcom newcomer events or you want to um, to do an editathon or a hackathon, those types of things, um, you can fund with these rapid grants. Um, there's also bigger grants if you have larger projects. If you have projects that are directly related to movement strategy, their movement strategy implementation grants. So there's a whole variety of things you can access. Um, so that's the way the system is working now. Um, and in the future, you know, you were asking about hubs earlier. In the future, for example, one of the functions that hubs could, could um, take on is um, 
regionally distributing money. And, um, and so, you know, like we said earlier, putting more of the decisions about how money is used, what projects to take on at the regional and um, local level. Um, I want to point out another resource um, with, uh, uh, because you were asking about support and support is not just money, but support is, um, is also, you know, getting peer support from your, from your fellow Wikimedians. And that's really hard to do on Meta because Meta is like this huge, um, huge array of resources and information. A lot of it is outdated. It's not being curated. Um, so um, one of the movement strategy projects that is happening right now is called the Capacity Exchange. And that's not going to be on Meta, but it's a platform. So it has a Meta page from which you can access um, the off Meta platform. And the idea there is I need something. I need to know how to do a certain thing. I, I want to see how other people organize. I need some instructions. Um, I need somebody to hold my hand and walk with me for a while until I figure this stuff out. On, on the capacity exchange, you can find other Wikimedians who are willing to help. And then there's also another project called um, Let's Connect that is very similar, where you can also connect with other Wikimedians for, for support. So I think those are things that are being developed right now. And um, in the future, hopefully, you know, resources will still be easy to access, but won't be necessarily grants, but there'll be more redistributing funds to the communities that need them. And, um, and then, you know, finding, finding the people that can support you. And it could be somebody outside of Africa, you know, you could find a buddy or a peer that can support you who's maybe from Latin America or, or some other place. So I think these are things are all developing and I kind of, that's, since we're about to wrap up, I want to just make one plea or one statement, which is you guys are joining the movement. You're new to the movement um, at a time that is very, very crucial for our movement. And you're joining it at a time where lots of change is happening and there's a chance for you to affect that change. There's a chance for you, Isaac, to go and say, these are the issues that refugees um, are dealing with. These are the things we need to, to um, so that we can be part of the movement. And, and you can shape things because right now we're in the implementation phase of the strategy. And it's not like you're coming in a movement and everything is set and you have to learn how stuff is done. You can shape how stuff is done. So that would be my plea to all the newcomers. Be, be bold. Be be uh you know ask for stuff and um and uh connect with other other wikimedians um to to make this movement what it needs to be so that's kind of we kind of went through all the questions and we hope that this conversation helped you guys um get connected with movement strategy and get um maybe be a little bit excited about how you can shape it um, anything you guys want to add to wrap up this episode, our guests, Ruby, Isaac, um, Sharon, any final thoughts you want to share with us and our listeners at this time? It's just like Nikki, Nicole, and everyone has said, um, let, this is, I mean, we have a very useful movement strategy. Let's all support it. Let's all be innovative in the way that we approach it. Let's see how we can bring um, these conversations in our local communities and encourage um, more newcomers to like get along with it, like so that we can all find the solutions that we are looking for, and we can all build the future that we are looking for together. I'll also add that um, I've got a lot of information about the movement and. Um, I'm already on board, so I'll bring a lot of people on board, try to explain to their understanding, so they will also be excited to join us on Wiki. I mean, my final words would be like huge thank you to, to our guests. 
And um, also plus one to what just Nikki, what Nikki just said, like, how can we encourage people to be bold and join the conversation? It's really, we are sitting here in our comfortable seats, knowing, have, having, um, having contributed to movement strategy for so many years. And what can we actually do, like to connect people better with movement strategy and understand also on our side, what the actual challenges and, and blockers and barriers are. So that is a wrap of the eighth episode of Wikimove. Thanks for listening. This was a little different today, Nicole. Um, so, yeah, so we're starting interestingly in the new year and we'll definitely, um, We'll do some different things this year and uh, make it maybe a little less nerdy and a little more interesting also for, for new people in the movement. But read us out. Go ahead. Wikimove is a production of Wikimedia Deutschland and its movement strategy and global relations team. Eva Martin pulls all the strings in the background so Nikki and I can create the excellent content. Or basically with the three of us can together create that excellent content. Our music was composed and produced by Rory Gregory and is of course available under a CC license, CC by SA, on Wikimedia Commons. And a huge thank you to our wonderful guests, Sharon, Ruby and Isaac. It's really been a pleasure. We'll release new episodes every month again this year and we hope that new ideas are born from the conversations in Wikimove and that collaborations get kick-started. Please visit our Wikimove meta page to react to our podcast, connect with other listeners, and subscribe to always be notified of our new episode releases. Uh, if, you, if you want to be added to our newsletter list, please send us an email at wikimove at wikimedia.de. If you missed our previous episode, check it out on our meta page. And you can also contact us at, at wikimove wikimedia.de to continue this discussion and share your suggestions for next episodes. Goodbye. Ciao for now. Tschüssi.